Welcome back to Believe in Colts, and we are back. I am Lawrence Owen. With me as usual is my guy Gerard Powers. Gerard, it's a snowy Monday after Easter. Uh, I know it, it probably didn't snow down where you're at, but up here on April 18th, the day after Easter, it snowed. Is it cool down there? Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool down here. We've been having rain the past, you know, three days or so. It rained all day yesterday on Easter, but it's cool. So I can I can only imagine how it's feeling in India. I can't, I mean, for it to be, you know, mid-April, uh, oh, good Lord, we got, I'm, I'm just not used to it. So let's, let's talk about some hot topics and get, and, and get us off of this, this thought process of, of why mother nature hates us. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but before we get started, there is. I just want to remind you all that our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA playoffs, fights, and even next season's futures. And don't forget that the MLB is back as well. Who are you picking to win the World Series? Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games and poker games. It's easy to join. Uh, just head over to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, man. So we had, since the last time we just talked, there was a pretty impressive signing that really kind of rounded out the defense and and made that trade for Yannick Ngakwe uh, a little easier to swallow, right? When we when we let go of Rocky Sin, we came we went out there and got former defensive player of the year, Stefan Gilmore, man. What was your reaction when you first saw that? Man, I saw a report that said that Indy was interested and you know it's not serious until Jim Mer said get on that jet. So when I saw the jet flew out to, to go see Gilly. I was like, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to get him. And then, uh, you know, as the day go by, the next day comes out and reports that, you know, the, the deal is done and all that. Man, I love it. I love the fit. Uh, knowing Gilly, uh, knowing his background, where he comes from, who he is as a player, uh, who he is as a person. Um, you know, he just fits the Colts, you know, nature. You know, he, he's, a, he's a family first guy. You know, he's a team guy. And then at the end of the day, he knows how to handle his business on the football field. So I think you're getting a premier corner who still got something to prove. I mean, you got a guy that's chasing Hall of Fame stuff now. Uh, you know, he has the Super Bowls. He has the the accolades, the defensive player of the year and all these things. He's made the big money, uh, you know, been the highest paid corner in the league for a few years and all that. So I think now you got a guy that's coming in with a sense of motivation of, yeah, he wants to win a Super Bowl and help the coach get there, but he wants to play well because he's chasing Hall of Fame numbers as well, too, which is very important to certain people in their journey as well. So I'm excited to see him get back to work. He's, you know, back healthy. You know, he had his little injury stint uh, to where he missed like six, seven games last year to start the year off. But when he came back and played for Carolina, shoot, he looked like old Gilly. You know, he looked like old Gilly to me. So uh, I'm excited. I thought, you know, Chris, you know, pulled another magic trick out of his hat again. Oh, yeah. We're going to be t- discussing some some Chris Ballard here in just a moment. But I'll tell you what. Gilly wasn't even on my, my radar, really. I was, you know, I, I thought that he would be too much for the Indianapolis Colts because, I mean, we do know that, you know, generally Chris Ballard doesn't throw out the big bucks for big name free agents. Right. Uh, it, I, he does occasionally when it, when, when it, when it fits exactly what he's looking for. Uh, but generally those are trades. Like when you go out and get a quarterback or when you go out and, and, and get a, a defensive tackle three tech, you know, uh, my favorite player currently on the team. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what turned my vision over was about a month ago, we had a couple guys from the Man to Man pod come on, you know, and Darius, uh, D-Butts, and, 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 and Bethay, they came on here and talked about, that. we were talking about, you know, the Honey Badger, and they kept bringing up Gilmore, you know, and I'm like, really, you honestly think, 
So shout out to them because they they had him already in their sights. And and even though I didn't think he was somebody that was, was going to be there, they really they they really did. And uh they were right. So good. Um no, no, you're exactly right. They definitely the I think Darius, no, it might have been Swan was one of the like the first one that brought up Gilly. And I was like, man, that would be a good fit. And then uh, I want to say Darius might have brought up James Bradbury. And I thought in my head, I was like, oh, man, that would be a good fit as well. Um, but I, I just, for whatever reason, didn't settle on me that Gilly could actually be here. For once, like you said, I thought it would be a little too pricey uh, because during that time we were in the thick of free agency, like getting ready mm-hmm. for the start. So I'm thinking that he's about to get, you know, a deal that uh, we might not be able to afford as far as what we need most important. Uh, or whatnot, but for this to fall in our hands again, you're talking about, you know, I know I keep bringing it up, these puzzle pieces that you're trying to get to fit and match and, you know, doing all these things. I mean, this is a huge puzzle piece because when you add a player like Gilly, then you got another special player in Kenny Moore. So now you're looking at that secondary, of course, Blackman and, and uh, Rodney and all the guys that we, you know, other guys that we are brought in for his debt purposes and all that. But when you look at the secondary now and you see those two guys, as far as Kenny Moore, who's now established as probably the best slot corner in football, one of the best defensive players in football. And then you look at, you know, Gilly, who's been the best player football player uh defensive football player in the league already and still one of the premier elite corners that we got in our game you know i mean it's, it's going to give offensive coordinators headaches a little bit i mean you got a guy that can literally shut down his entire side of the field and then you got a guy in the slot that's a, a ball playmaking player and kenny moore and then uh like you said us adding the pass rushers and you know trying to get some pieces to where we can get to that quarterback man we got we got something in the working that could be a special defense. I know you said it in maybe the first couple pods. Uh, you was asking what the, does this defense need uh, to kind of become elite or become, you know, get over that hump and just be that, mm-hmm. that you know, that main staple or whatnot. And this is a big piece, man, that can that can possibly get us there. You know, I didn't even say Darius Leonard name yet, you know. So this is a huge piece that, uh, that I think you now going into the off season and getting ready for the season, looking forward to it. Like, I'm excited about the defense which you don't hear that much when you're talking about Indian coach football. We're just so used to the offense, you know, getting all the credit. But I'm excited about the defense now. <laughs> it is true. I mean, you go back, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning days, we talk about offense, 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 all the offensive players that have all these accolades. And we have – I can't even count on my hands how many pro bowlers we have on our defense right now. It's just ridiculous, right? Uh, pro bowlers, all pros, uh, MVPs, uh, or, well, defensive MVPs. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, really looking forward to the defense, uh, defensive play this upcoming season. I, I wanted to be at least a top five defense this year because we, we've talked about it. Offense can get you into the playoffs, but defense wins championships, right? And yeah. that it, it, it's still that way today. Um, a lot of questions about Gilmore. Uh, we, we talked a little bit before we started recording about uh, his age. And, you know, where that is, his injury, his age, that type of stuff. When you watch his gameplay from last year when he came back from the hamstring. Uh, no, it wasn't a hamstring. It was a quad. I'm sorry, quad. Uh, wrong side of the thigh. <laughs> um, Same, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... What did you see? Do, do, do you see a drop-off in his, or a major drop-off in his play? What, what, what do you think that we're getting? Uh, what, what Stephon Gilmore are we getting here? No, I think you're getting elite Stephon. I mean, when you watch him play, and if you look at the PFF stuff, which I'm not a big fan of the PFF because they don't really know what goes on in the coach's room and how guys are being graded. But when you uh, if you look at go off their numbers and just you know watch him and look the way he plays, I mean, he was still, if you just add the games that he played compared to everybody else, he still was up there as far as uh, one of the top guys, as far as in completion uh, percentage. I think he had maybe three picks in the eight games or however many that he played. Uh, But when I watched film, you know, me being a former defensive back and I kind of call myself a defensive back connoisseur, 
Uh, but when I watch film on guys, it's just about, you know, is he still um, – tight to the receivers, their separation from the receiver. Like, it's just little things. You look at that because the plays are calm. You know, these guys, wide receivers, they get paid in the NFL, too, to make plays and all that. But if you get a guy when you watch film and he's always – every throw is contested, he's always right there uh, and uh, hip to hip with that wide receiver, then you know that guy is still playing at elite level. Now, when you watch film and there's major separation and – you know, every other play, he's giving up a ball here, here or there, and he's not hip to hip. Then you can start talking about, ah, oh, he might be missing a step. He might not have that juice anymore. But when I watch Stephon play, man, he still was guarding the number one receiver when he came back. <laughs> he was still traveling and doing all that stuff. So that lets you know that he's still in elite mode. And um, like I said, coming off an of injury, it's kind of hard to get back in the rhythm of things just because um, – you know, the injury that you got, you're still trying to make sure that that thing is not going to, you know, affect your play going forward. But now going through the season, going through the off season and all that, I expect Gilly to come back, you know, this season like his old self, you know, injury free and just ready to ball. So I watched an interview from Stefan uh, that happened not long ago, and he talks about by when he's covering a receiver by 10 yards, he says he knows exactly what the route is and that's why he jumps it. Whether it's a fly, a dig and out, you know, a butt hook, whatever. Is that right? I, can a cornerback read a receiver that damn well to know that within 10 yards of his route, what he's about to do? Yeah. If, if you don't know exactly the route, you got an idea. It's either like this or that, if that makes sense. So for somebody like Stefan, he's going to go through his three-step read progressions to where, you know, as soon as the quarterback gets the ball, he's going to know if it's going to be quick game or not. You know, if it's that quick slant, quick out, quick curl, because he can tell by the drop in the quarterback. Quarterback in three-step is always going to be a quick three-step drop. You know, get the ball, quick three-step drop, got to get the ball out right now. It's timing. Uh, whenever the quarterback goes into his five-step drop and he transfers his eyes back to that wide receiver, depending on on that stem, depending on that release, depending on that step. So it goes all the way back to your film study and everything that you've been, you know, studying your opponents for. Uh, he just got a good way of, um, I guess, um, processing things in his mind to where he can go from step one, step two to step three, and it gives him exactly – what route is about to happen or whatever, what play combos is about to uh, go on or whatever the case may be. So that's what I mean by elite corners have certain attributes that you just can't teach, you know, and this one with Stefan is more so of his film study. You know, uh, if you know what route's coming, you know, you should be the defensive player of the year at some point. You know, that just goes to a tribute to your hard work and dedication of uh, studying and doing all that. But that's true. When he says that after 10 yards, he knows exactly what's coming. If it's not the exact route he's knowing uh, that that he think is coming, it's going to be something similar. So he's right in knowing uh, in the progression of the uh, uh, just understanding the offensive mindset and progression of, of routes and timing and all those type things. He add that into his package to where he's able to jump routes left and right. And that's why that's why those guys that are that we considered elite are great. You know, your Kenny Moore, same thing. I bet, you know, once we get Kenny Moore on the pod, uh, which which is gonna come later on in a year, we ask him that same question. I bet he he says the same thing. Like, man, sometimes I just know exactly what route's coming. Wow. Well, that's that's actually pretty impressive because I mean wide receivers and quarterbacks, they do everything they can to hide what they're doing, you know, yeah. especially, you know, wide receivers running their routes, you know, their takeoffs and, and all that. They, they try to make it look exactly the same, no matter what route that they're running, you know, or, no, or right. even, or try to sell, you know, something completely different than what they're doing, you know, or set up a corner, you know, make it look like I'm doing this move this time, like three or four different times for this exact same route, and then use that same thing, but do, something completely different later on you know uh so no, no, that's right i remember talking to uh i was talking to reggie wayne one time and that was his thing his thing was he was going to make sure everything looked the same every route every stem everything looked the same but the, it goes vice versa too though reggie like a great receiver he's going to watch how the cornerback is sitting he's going to watch where the cornerback eyes is at is he looking inside is that zone or is he looking at me that's man to man and like wide receivers got 
certain things that they look at as far as when they're glancing the defense or glancing that guy that's covering them that can give them like, oh, this is cover two. Oh, this is cover three. Oh, they are man to man or whatever the case may be. So it kind of goes back and forth. And uh, that that's what make our game so great, because even though on the field, it just looked like guys are playing football, but it's really a mental like a mental chess match. And you're just trying to. Mm-hmm you know, uh, move that piece in the right place, depending on what the defense or what the offense is giving you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, Ballard talks about football intelligence a lot, right? And, you know, sometimes football intelligence will will override natural God-given ability on the field, you know? So uh, that – and when you got both of those combinations together in one person – you get guys like Stephon Gilmore and and yeah. uh, you know Darius Leonard and and DeForest Buckner. So Chris Ballard finally opened up his pocketbook a little bit, uh, grabbed grabbed the cornerback. <laughs> but we were discussing, man, he got him for cheaper than what we thought he we were he was going to get him, and that's that's odd considering. He went. Uh, he visited the Rams, the Bills, the 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 Bengals, the Raiders. You know, these are all got. Two of those teams were in the Super Bowl last year. You know, uh, one of the teams are a Super Bowl contender, new one, uh, and then um, the Bills. They're also a you know a Super Bowl contender. So you're looking at four Super Bowl contenders. And the Indianapolis Colts get the guy. That makes me want, and for less than what we thought. So, I, I, in my assumption, he had to have been given an offer that was more than eleven and a half million dollars a year, you know, from someone else. So, yeah. what do you think would 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 sell? And a former DPOY to the to to Indiana, you know, for for when, this situation. You know, when it comes to athletes uh, choosing where they want to go, of course you want to go to a good team, obviously. Like you said, you just named some teams that are legit Super Bowl contenders, legit teams that got rosters ready to compete for it right now and might be missing a piece or two. But, um, you know, the money, when it comes to the money situation, I know last week I talked about, uh, when I was a free agent and I was getting ready to go to San Diego and the money was one thing and, you know, AZ had me until they drove the money up to where it was some similar to where I felt comfortable. You know, when you look at California and the tax rates and all those things that go in California, that money might have he might have gotten a bigger deal in, in California. But after taxes and all that stuff takes place, then you look at your real money and it might not be the same as it was if you went to an indie, if you went to you know, a different place to where, you know, the government is not going to take up, you know, so much of your money. So I'm pretty sure he he had discussions about that as well. Uh, but on the flip side, like you said, he can't, coming off an injury, wasn't able to play a, a full season because he missed uh, the first six, seven games or whatever the case may be. So it was more so. And then once you wait so long in free agency and they're spending money on other guys and all that, sometimes that money goes down a little bit. Uh, so I think Stefan might be in a situation where he was willing to take a little less on a team that got some defensive pieces in place to where, you know, everything is not just going to be on his shoulders. There's other great superstar type players on that defense um, that can really make them elite. So I'm pretty sure they discussed all of that. And then when you look at the offensive side of the ball, you got, you know, one of the best running backs in the game, one of the better quarterbacks in the game and, you know, still looking to add some pieces there. But. Uh, I think it was probably one of those situations to where Chris Ballard, you, you've said it before, um, you know, he take care of his guys. If he brings you in and you play well, you know, he's known for just taking care of your guys and doing all that. So I'm pretty sure Stefan is looking at this as more of a let me go to Indy on a prove it type deal, do my thing and be back up uh, and, and ready for a new deal in another year. Uh, so it's probably just one of those situations as long as the money was close to all those other teams, he just was going to the best situation and the best fit that fit him. Absolutely. And the Indianapolis Colts, I don't know, have have you watched the new uh, Colts um, 
episode two that just dropped uh, no. last week. Okay. Okay. All right, so it, it's about the guy who who deals with contracts and and the cap cap mm-hmm. space, and they say that there's a cash to cap right where they deal with cash more of like what is now as opposed yep. to looking at the cap, which is you know looking at later on where a lot of teams are you know pushing everything back so you know they'll have to pay for it later right right Right. but they're getting it now but have to pay for it later since ballard and and this guy is doing cash which is all now they're going to have more cap space later for said extensions that you just talked about right where where uh they're looking to set themselves up for long-term success rather than just right now. And that's, that's yep. a, a, a big, big plus in their, in their hat right there. Um, so one more thing. I was talking about it. Uh, we had like 20 some million in cap space for this year available. Now, obviously, uh, I think the the contract itself hasn't dropped yet, but I think that the Gilmore contract's probably pretty front loaded heavy, um, just in case, right? Mm-hmm. Just in case. Uh, but you talked about it, where you know you might get a contract extension at the end of this year if he plays very well, stays healthy, that type of situation. Um, now I can't remember where I was going with that. Uh, uh, with the cap coming up, late uh, players getting ready to get re-signed and all that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So if this was front heavy, it ate up the majority of the $21, uh, $24 million we have. There's still holes on our roster. Now, a lot of people believe that, you know, they are probably going to go offensive heavy in the the draft, even though we don't have a first round pick, but still could go very offensive heavy because of how deep it is at positions of need on the offense. But is there a chance that we could see maybe uh, a restructure of another deal or something? Do you think that? would be a precursor uh, to maybe Ballard having his eyes on another player. Like if he restruck, cause he talked about, you want to have the money available to get the guy that you want. Uh, if he, if he becomes available, you don't want to wait until, you know, it's too late and then be like, Hey, I need you to sit there for, you know, a few days while I <laughs> renegotiate someone's deal real quick. You want to have that money available. Do you think there's a chance we might see something like that happen here pretty soon where, you know, maybe a, a Ryan Kelly or a Darius Leonard or someone like that might end up restructuring uh, just a little bit just to free up a little bit of money uh, yeah. for for maybe a receiver or something? If it... Yeah, I can definitely see something like that happening. When it comes to restructuring, a lot of times um, you might see like, oh, you know, you might hear a guy, that, that gets released saying like yeah they wanted me to take a pay cut and I, I didn't want to and you know they had to move on but in a situation with say Darius Leonard like you said you would restructure Darius and let's just say if Darius I don't know how much Darius is supposed to make you know this year but let's just say he's making 10 million dollars you know this season you will go as a base salary you'll go to Darius and be like hey we'll give you nine million up front you know to restructure just because just so your base salary can be one million so at the end of the day he's still getting the 10 million at the you know it's just cap wise we've already gave that money away so now we can only now we only is hit with that million of base salary as far as cap or whatever the situation so i can definitely see them going to you know one of the bigger name guys that you know got got a lot of money that's uh due to them as far as base salary and just giving them a signing bonus you know get them to restructure and cutting them a check, you know, for whatever they're supposed to make this year, just so it can give them uh, some space on the cap. So I can definitely see something like that because when you look at our defense now, I think now we're at a spot 
to where, yeah, now we can just plug in some pieces wherever those holes are. They don't got to be big name guys. Like, we mm-hmm. got our big name players now. Now we just plug in those role pieces that's going to get us over the hump because it's always, you know, the guys that we don't know about that end up having these great years to, to, to make it, you know, what it is. And I think now when you look at the offense, we're going to have to find another key guy, just like how we found the Gilmore, just like how we found Rodney uh, McLeod. And, like, we're going to have to find some key guys maybe that's still sitting in free agency that we might have to pay a little bit, you know, for here or there. And, uh, and I think he might – I think Chris might want to get, get ready for a situation in case a player like that pops up. But I can definitely see them getting one more – name uh if you want to put it that way name for the offensive side of the ball because even though i like Pittman and i know um i know they they came out earlier in the year talking about how they like the wide receiver room right now i think reggie wayne is not going in there saying that he likes everybody right now i think he might even want you know just give me one guy i know for sure like proven guy that's done it that you know can come in and be a great fit with matt ron so i can see them going to get you know, some type of receiver. I don't know which one. I haven't done my research to know what receiver out there would fit, you know, exactly what we want to do. But I, I think we definitely need a veteran guy in that receiver room to kind of give us some assurance uh, going into the season. You bring up the wide receivers coach, um, Reggie. And I'm curious, is Reggie – being a wide receivers core, is that a selling point for wide receivers to bring them in? I mean, a former player trying to be a coach? Could possibly. Plus, Reggie got a lot of relationships with a lot of players. Yeah. You know, Re- Reggie's always been a mentor, you know, to guys across the league. Uh, I mean, y'all would be surprised how many people hit him up just for advice or training regimen or whatever the case may be. So Reggie does have influence uh, when it comes to – you know, players liking him, if, if that makes sense. So I can see, you know, anybody that Chris and, and the scouting department, player personnel department, anybody that they like out there, if they bring them in the building, they're probably going to get them because of Reggie and, and how Reggie is. And once they get around Reggie to see how he is and all that. So I can definitely see that at a selling point for somebody that they might, you know, want to bring in that's a big name guy that possibly might not even know Reggie. But once you get in that room and you get to meet Reggie, uh, it, it's hard to kind of tell him no, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense completely. I mean, he's uh, he, he's got a strong personality. Um, uh, I mean, it, 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 even if you're not a Colts fan, when you, you watch him uh, on, you know, like NFL Network, I believe it was that he was part of, you know, uh, he, 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 he uh, expresses himself very, very well. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, as Colts fans, we all know that the, the type of worker he was and, and 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 the things he did on his entrances to training camp when, you know, going into training camp. That was just I mean, he comes in in a dump truck and a hard hat and like it's time to work. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, it's. <laughs> It's it's really hard not to like someone like that when you're a fan, anyhow. Mm-hmm. So, I, whoa, the coach like Reggie loves the coach like through and through loves the coach. That's why I was like, man, that's a great fit for him to you not know, come back and join because he could he could have probably went anywhere to to coach if he wanted to, you know. So for Coach Wright to continue to call him every off season to try to get him back man I was I'm, I'm real happy about that because I do think it's going to do wonders as far as the guys in that room going forward just being a pro I mean he's your pros pro uh never miss practice always on time or let last one to leave you know uh team chemistry like he's he's everything that you want in an athlete so you know I'm excited to see that wide receiver room develop and grow and uh kind of beat the the expectations that's kind of been set on them now because right now I think everybody's kind of looking at that room like what are we going to do like who do we got for Matt Ryan to mm-hmm. you know do, what he do so I think once we see that room blossom you'll understand why they're blossoming and it's because it's going to be because of Reggie yeah uh hopefully um now I I love MPJ I really do but I really like Campbell 
and I really wish that he could just, you know, be on the field. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's uh, that's that's an issue. The Colts had a lot of injuries last year. Now I know every team goes through injuries every year. Um, some are more key players than others, yeah. but uh, yeah. <laughs> Baltimore lost what fifty three running backs uh, in the season, <laughs> and they're a running team. <laughs> and then their running quarter, then a running quarterback got hurt. <laughs> yeah, then the running quarterback gets his injury. I'm like, what? Uh, this team is is done, you know. <laughs> At least for this year. Um, but well, I think we've we've talked about quite a bit but um is there anybody coming up in this upcoming draft that you think that the Colts might have their eye on I don't know anybody specifically I know I was having a discussion with somebody and I was like normally Colts like Big Ten uh guys when it comes to playmakers like I remember Anthony Gonzalez coming out of Ohio State and I like Colts love the Big Ten guys and, uh, and when you look at Ohio State, wide receiver, like they got two or three guys that could go first round, I think. And, and not not first round, but I know first two rounds as far as in that wide receiver room. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe one of those guys, if, if they slip down to the second round and it's available, that they'll go out there and grab. You know what's weird? I was just talking to somebody who is a big Ohio State fan and is like, man, if we could grab one of those, that'd be great. And I'm like, I don't want any Ohio State players. <laughs> All right. Because every Ohio State player gets hurt in their second year. Hurt, yeah. Every single one of them. Uh, not just the ones that the Colts have get. You go out there and look at Bosa. Mm-hmm. Both Bosa's. Mm-hmm. Second year, hurt. Right? Go look at Chase. Chase, not second easy. year, hurt. Yeah. McLaurin got hurt. Hey, uh, every single one of them are hurt, you know, second year, third year, something like that. So that's, that's like, that's weird. Now, obviously you look at that and go, well, that's, that's kind of dumb to, you know, point out, but if there's something there, there's something there. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the strength and conditioning, uh, that Ohio state teaches their guys. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but you get some SEC guys beat up too. I think it's just I don't I don't know if it's the power five thing to where you know they kill guys in the off season program to get ready for the season. So uh, I know I faced a lot of injuries. You know when I got to the coach, you know I broke my foot twice, I broke my forearm, uh, oh. all that stuff. Uh, so it's kind of freakish type things, but um, it, it could be those off season programs can be a little strenuous uh, when it comes to <laughs> when we're talking college because I mean you're thinking. Ohio State, big time program. You know they they're in the playoffs every year, so I can only imagine, you know what the, that all all season looked like. And I'm pretty sure it looks like your Alabamas, your Georgias. It looks the same. So uh, a bunch of SEC guys get get you know they come in a little beat up as well. All right. Well, uh, I just I just hope that you know we we don't go through that same situation because you know we got. The Taekwon Lewis that got hurt. We got uh, Campbell that got hurt. We got uh, Hooker, you know, Hooker, second year hurt. Uh, it was just, it is what it is. Um, I and, too. oh, I did too, man. Well, he, I think he's got a starting job over at the Cowboys this year. So that's, you know, good on him. Good on him. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it uh, for this episode. I'm next week we'll probably talk a little bit about the draft since it's coming up um yeah that's going to be interesting um a lot of a lot of stuff that we're going to have to cover is it in vegas where is it this year uh i think it is but let me look real quick i think it's in i knew it went in new york this year so i think it's vegas though in the city no no that's 2023 Detroit. Oh, so Detroit. No, that's that's 2024. <laughs> so is it New York? <laughs> Hold on. Click and no, it's Vegas. It's Vegas. Last year was Cleveland. This year is Vegas. Yep. Okay. And then next year is Kansas City. And then Detroit. 
Gotcha. I had to look it up. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I thought you was right with the Vegas the first time, but I had to make sure. Um, I mean, they got a beautiful new stadium out there, man. I think it's freaking gorgeous. I like their stadium. I like Minnesota stadium too. I like their their new stadium is like crazy. And that's why I was talking to um I was talking to a friend of mine that that went over there and played. He's from Florida, and I was like, man, it's like, man, you got to go up to to Minnesota. It's gonna be freezing cold. He was like, freezing cold. Like, man, we play indoors now. And I'm like, oh snap! I I kept forgetting because normally we used to go. You know, Minnesota used to be outdoors for that little stint uh, until that stadium was built. So uh, I love their stadium though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what Buffalo's new stadium ends up being like because they just got approved for a new one. So nothing like Lucas Oil, though. Lucas Oil is still top five, top three stadium in football. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people don't think that you know they they come up, and I've had a lot of people say the outside is is boring, and and I'm like, go inside. Go inside. Go yeah. inside. That it's thing is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's Indiana weather. Of course, it's not going to look great from the outside. You know, <laughs> we always live in indoors here in Indiana. I mean, it just snowed in April eighteenth. You know. <laughs> All right, I think that'll do us. Um, thanks for spending about forty minutes with me today. Uh, got to cover Gilmore and and a little bit about going over you know, contracts and Chris Ballard and a bunch of other stuff. If you guys are listening to this or watching this, whether you're listening to it over on the believe podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts or watching us on YouTube, uh, make sure you share this to your favorite social media, help get us uh, out there a little bit. Um, Cause you know, you doing that helps us out a ton and yes. thank you for listening. And thank until next time, is there, is there something else you wanted to say as we exit? No, that was it. That was it, my man. All right, man. Until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That was Gerard Powers. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Go Colts.